Okay, let's start. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Julia. I'm a product manager at Product Management Festival. Uh, today, I'll be your host. We have a special guest who will talk about a very challenging topic for some of us product managers. And uh, first, I would like to just say a few words about PMF, Product Management Festival, why we're doing what we're doing. And then um, I'll leave the floor to our guest. And please feel free to ask questions if you have any at the end of the presentation. I encourage you as well to unmute when we will do that and just to have a bit of in-person interaction. And I hope this is valuable. The session will be recorded. So in case you need to leave sooner to have your lunch, or if you have a meeting, don't worry. We're going to share the recording so you can watch the whole thing or um, catch up on what you've missed. So uh, Product Management Festival um, is a initiative which has been around since many years. Um, I was just telling Valentin how it all started, how it all started for me. Uh, we're around uh, the markets in six years. We're doing a lot of things. So just information for you, you can benefit from all the things we're doing. We have a report, Trends and Benchmarks report, which is completely free. You can download it online. It has a lot of interesting information which can help you as a product manager in your career. For example, salaries, maybe you find out uh, your salary is not at the right level. This is really structured by countries. Uh, if you're a product leader and you manage your team, there's a lot of information how to um, structure these teams, what kind of components, uh, how many UX designers, how many PMs do you have in your team. Um, Download it and let us know if there's something else you want to find out more about. This is, as I mentioned, free. And what we want from uh, product managers out there is to fill out the survey when you send it every year, because this is how we, we manage to build this report. Otherwise, we have two conferences every year. One is in Zurich. Um, one is in Singapore. Last year we, we did the one in Zurich online just because of the uh, traveling condition limitations and events restrictions from the government. This year we're planning to do it in September, 13th, 14th of September uh, as well in Zurich and streamed online. Let's see how things go. Uh, Nevertheless, we keep the community engaged with a lot of events. We have the PM, PMF Connects the session like today, which you're attending, but we also have PM Nights. These are more localized uh, events happening with the help of our ambassadors throughout the world. Um, absolutely free and uh, free access to anybody who wants to attend. So for example, on our website, we have upcoming PM nights throughout different locations. So there's one, for example, in Tokyo or New York, you can join if the time is not too weird for you, you can join these sessions as well. We have a uh, initiative addressed more for product leaders. This is a more, more of an intimate uh, conversation through, with product leaders, which are of course facing a bit of different challenges um, because they also have to manage people, not only products. So um, if you are a product leader and are looking to find your circle where you are, just to reach out to us, we can put you in contact with, uh, with the groups. And last but not least, we I'm super, super proud to be able to work with the INSAD. They've just been announced to have the best MBA in the world by Financial Times. We have a program with them, which is also addressed to product leaders. It's one week, um, one week in uh, close to Paris in um, Fontainebleau. And um, we're also doing uh, one in May and we're also doing one in San Francisco. Um, just check out the website if you're interested. 
Thank you for your attention. That being said, I'm going to give the floor to our guest today, Valentin Huang. He's a CPO at Harvester, and I let him introduce himself um, and tell you more about his career and his topic for today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me. Um, so I'm Valentin, very happy to be here to talk about sales and products. Uh, as a quick introduction about myself, I'm the co-founder and CPO of a company called Harvester. What we do is a product success platform. Um, so we help product teams make the right roadmap decisions based on customer feedback, business data, and uh, cross-functional collaboration. So part of my job is actually working with um, other product teams and with the teams that work with products to understand how uh, they work and collaborate. And that includes, of course, the, the sales team. And what we understood is, is how important the relationship between sales and products is in the B2B space to make sure that uh, your company is building and uh, delivering successful products on the market. So that's what um, I wanted to um, to share with you today. So first we'll go through um, why basically this relationship can be complex. And I, I think there is a lot of um, uh, complexities in this relationship in the, in the B2B space. And then uh, I'll go through different tactics that um, you can apply to improve this relationship to make sure that product um, is helping sales sell better and that sales is helping products build better products. So maybe to start with um, a, a simple image that will probably be um, a good example to explain how this relationship between product and, uh, and sales can be complex is what I would call the feature request problem. So what happens um, in, in the B2B space is that you have uh, salespeople talking on a daily basis with customers uh, trying to get new deals in. And what happens is you have this sales rep talking with the customer, everything is um, fine, all the roadblocks have been removed. And at some point, just before actually closing the contract, the customer comes with a feature request. And that's what when basically problem starts, uh, starts coming in. So what does the salesperson do? He needs to close the deal. So he's going to see uh, his product team, the product manager, to basically ask if the feature can be built for this uh, specific prospect. So of course, the product manager is busy with delivering other things. He has a, a backlog or potentially a roadmap that's almost full for two years. And unfortunately, what happens very often is that uh, the product manager is going to say no. And this no is going to trigger uh, something very negative for the salesperson who is gonna lose a big deal. But the problem is not only that the sales, the sales rep is losing a deal or that the product manager loses uh, a potential friend in the company, is that this kind of situation creates misalignments and tensions that uh, in the end will endanger the business as a whole and prevent the company from building and, and selling successful products. And that's what um, we are going to talk about today. Thanks to four different um, aspects of the topic. So first, I'm going to present the four uh, top four frictions that can happen between product and sales. Then I'm going to go through how sales can actually help product build better products, how product can help salespeople sell more. And in the end, we'll see how um, companies can make sure that they, they deliver long-term product success by implementing the right collaboration processes between product and sales. So um, this is going to be really, of course, B2B oriented um, uh, because, because of the relationship between products um, and sales, of course, is, is really happening and critical, critical in the B2B space. So the examples I'm going to have in this presentation are really going to be uh, B2B oriented as well. So let's start with the top four frictions between products and sales. So the first friction that can happen is when you have um, diverging goals in an organization. So you have a sales rep on the one hand 
that is focused on three things. The first one is closing deals. Um, so it's how many new customers can I bring in in uh, the shortest amount of time uh, possible. Whereas on the other hand, you have product managers thinking about solving customer problems. The second thing, second diverging goal is sales reps focusing on acquiring new customer logos. So one customer after another, whereas product managers on the other hand are gonna focus on uh, a market or a segment within that market. So usually several customers and building things for, for several customers, not just for one or two specific customer logos. The third thing that um, where sales reps are actually focusing is the value of the deals that they are working on, because that's of course one of their KPIs. That's also how they're incentivized. Whereas on the other side, you're gonna have product managers focusing on metrics that can be really specific to product, like daily active users, uh, retention, and basically metrics that are not directly tied to business value. So when you have diverging goals between those teams, between sales and products, that's um, the first source really of, of friction between those two departments. And that's when actually problems starts because you uh, have teams that are not aligned on where they need to go. The second source of friction is diverging uh, time scales. So what's really important to understand is that the sales cycle is very different from the product roadmap uh, cycle. The sales cycle is usually short term. Uh, you have prospects you're talking to that you need to close in um, a few weeks, maybe a few months, maybe a bit more if you're in the in the enterprise software, for example. But usually it's quite it's quite short term and it needs to happen uh, now. Whereas on the other side, if you look at the product roadmap, product managers um, try to think when they're building the roadmap about the medium or the long term. They, they don't think about weeks, they would rather think about um, quarters or potentially years, which doesn't mean that the, the salespeople do not uh, think strategically, uh, but the sales cycle in itself is more uh, short term. So, so because it's more short term, the sales cycle is also more um, tactical. I need this feature now to close uh, this specific deal right now, whereas on the other side, the product roadmap goes more on a strategic level and is going to think about how we can address markets or segments in the medium or long term. And the last thing is the focus of, um, of the sales cycle and of sales rep on current prospects that need to become new customers, whereas the product roadmap, on the other hand, focuses on either current customers so people that are already using the product and have um, uh, problems to solve and that we want to make uh, more active in the product, more successful with the product or future customers. Whereas um, the sales rep is focused really on current prospects that need to be become customers um, and, and close these as fast as possible. So the second source of friction is really uh, a misunderstanding that there is when it comes to time scales, and it's important to understand that these time scales can be really different uh, between sales on the one hand and product uh, roadmap on the other hand. The third uh, pitfall is poor communication. So it's very difficult to communicate when you don't speak the same language. And sales and product uh, basically speak different languages, right? Because sales uh, usually talks and speaks the language of the customer because they interact with customers on a, on a daily basis. So they think in terms of solutions, in terms of uh, things the customer wants, in terms of feature requests, whereas product thinks in terms of problems, in terms of need, in terms of uh, use cases. Sales talks about deal breakers where product will actually talk about opportunities that can serve a larger market or a larger segment uh, instead of one specific customer. 
So to understand the friction and then find solutions to these frictions between products and sales, it's important to understand the different languages that we are talking about and to try to find uh, a shared language that can be used to work in the, in the same direction. So of course, poor communication usually leads to um, poor collaboration. What you see here on the screen on the top is a representation of uh, what the product's life cycle is. So first you build a roadmap, then you start um, discovering problems, finding solutions, and, and ultimately delivering these solutions. And on the bottom, uh, what you see is the, the sales cycle. So you build your sales plan, you start prospecting um, the list of, of target customers that you have, you've identified, and then you enter the closing phase where you're gonna do uh, your best to actually close as many customers and as many deals as possible. So what's um, wrong here is that collaboration between product and sales usually happens, happens at the very end of, of both cycles. So it happens when the, the delivery phase is taking place for the product and when the closing phase is taking place for sales. So what happens is that sales have uh, prospects they are talking to, they're about to close deals, feature requests come in, they go to see products to ask for uh, new features, but the product is already busy delivering other things and doesn't have any more space um, in, the, um, in the sprints or in the, the current roadmap phase. So that's when the no uh, starts arriving and that's where basically problems uh, arise as well. Because, and, and why does this happen? Because the collaboration did not start when it should start, which is actually on the, uh, strategic, on the strategic planning part, which is the roadmap for the product and the sales plan for the, the, the sales team. When collaboration starts very uh, early on, then product and sales team can make sure that they are working uh, on the same goals, they are targeting the same customer segments, and that in the end, what is being delivered by the product meets the needs of the prospects that are actually being prospected by the sales team. And this removes as much friction as possible. This removes and, and can solve the, the feature request problem that uh, we talked about in the beginning. So how now do we make sure we, we solve um, these different frictions by implementing the right uh, communication and collaboration processes between sales and products? So the first thing is how can sales help uh, product teams build, build better products? So I like this, this sentence from Jack Welch who uh, is the former General Electric CEO who said that there are only two sources, two sources of competitive advantage. Uh, the first one is the ability to learn more about our customers faster than the competition. And the second one is the ability to turn that learning into action faster than the competition. And salespeople, because they talk to customers on a daily basis, have really this um, knowledge and these insights that a company needs to learn faster about customer than the competition and to turn that learning into action faster than the competition. So they play a legitimate and very important role in building the right product. And um, that's why they should really be active contributors in building the roadmap and making sure that uh, the, the roadmap meets the needs of the customer. It's even more true when we look at um, these figures that actually come out from, a, from the product management trends and benchmark reports from uh, product management festival that shows the main activities of product managers. So quite surprisingly, interacting with customers is not uh, the number one activity performed by product managers. It even quite comes relatively late in the, in the, in the priorities. Whereas if you had the same um, graph for salespeople interacting with customers would surely be number one because that's what salespeople do on a daily basis. And for this reason, salespeople are really legitimate um, and, and they play a key role in understanding customer needs and communicating those needs to the customers. So the way, first way sales of course help uh, products build better products 
is by escalating feedback from customers to products to make sure that the needs are met and to make sure ultimately that sales will be able to um, acquire more customers. But the, the, the feedback process is often um, quite messy in the B2B space. And again, that's when poor communication and, and tensions arise because what will happen is that if you don't have a formal and structured process in place, um, sales reps go to see product managers directly, um, talk to them, ask for features and push and push again. And it's in the end, the loudest uh, sales rep who, are, who is gonna have his priorities put on the roadmap and, and you don't want that because that's not the right way of, of taking decisions. So to leverage the feedback from sales appropriately, you want to put in place a process that will help product teams get qualified feedback from sales uh, to build the right product. And what does qualified mean is looking first at problems, not features, of course, because that's what product managers do but then associate these problems with uh, first lost or one opportunities, trying to understand with the input from sales, why are we losing or winning deals and how can we use this information to lose uh, fewer deals in the future by building the, the right product. The second thing is understanding the revenue that's tied to a request. Um, so it's not enough for um, salespeople to just request a feature, what's important is to understand how uh, a priority this feature can be in the global roadmap. And a good way of understanding that is trying to understand the revenue that can be attached to opportunities of the roadmap and prioritize opportunities against, um, uh, according to this, uh, this criteria. The last thing is uh, not only having continuous feedback from sales, but also engaging sales in the construction of the product roadmap that usually happens quarterly um, or, or sometimes yearly to put salespeople in the shoes of product managers and ask them to give their top priorities, for example, for the quarter and to be able to justify these priorities, not only because they want to close this or that deal, but because these uh, priorities can be associated to a revenue or will help us in the future to uh, lose fewer opportunities because that will help also sales team understand the way product is prioritizing and it will help um, both teams to be, to be aligned on, on the priorities of the roadmap. What's important here also to avoid the, again, the loudest person to have um, his ideas prioritized on the roadmap before the other ones is to prefer written feedback and a structured written feedback process versus a well communication, because this way you can make sure that all the feedback, all the requests are recorded somewhere and that when you take decisions, you take them in um, a rational way and not following the one uh, the, the most basically pushy, the pushiest uh, sales rep in, uh, in the room. So that's the first thing, leveraging feedback from sales to build the right product thanks to a, a structured uh, feedback process. So a good way to do this, an example of what we are doing, for example, uh, at Harvester is that we uh, want to make sure that this process is as easy as possible for sales people, uh, because they are used to basically going to see product managers or reaching out by email or Slack to, uh, to give feedback. Uh, so if there is another process, it needs to be as easy for them as possible. So the right way to do is to, is to give them a way directly in the tool that they are using on a daily basis. So their CRM, Salesforce, for example, to very easily submit feedback from a customer, either a company or a person directly to the product team and make sure that this feedback is then uh, processed and categorized by, by the product team. So now that we saw how sales can help product teams build a better product thanks to a structured feedback um, uh, process, we're gonna see how product can actually help uh, in return sales reps sell more. 
the first thing is to understand that salespeople are in contact with the customer on a daily basis. So they are the ones who get these feature requests first, and they are the ones who uh, need to give an answer to those requests. And it's not an easy position to be in. And that's why uh, very often sales try to promise things because uh, you don't want to say no, of course, to someone, to a customer. And uh, you want to basically move from this discussion around feature requests and saying yes or no to ideally a discussion around uh, selling your roadmap and ultimately selling your vision. And that's where product can help sales uh, first by helping them going from a discussion about feature requests to a discussion about uh, problems. So a good um, a tactic that can be uh, used quite easily is having sales and product people doing customer interviews together, for example. So having a product manager going to see customers or prospect with salespeople, uh, understanding how the, the, the process is going, understanding the kind of questions the customer is asking, and then helping sales team answer to these uh, feature requests by using the techniques that the product knows about user research and how you can go from a feature request from a solution to uncovering underlying needs and, and problems. So if a customer asks for feature A, how can you make sure that you um, try to understand why the customer is asking for this specific feature and actually what the problem behind this specific request is? Because what can happen is that um, you may uncover that actually the feature the customer is asking is a solution to a problem that's already solved in another way by, by the products. And this would remove actually this feature request from being a roadblock and help salespeople close, uh, close the deal. So by moving this discussion from feature requests to actually problems, you uh, as a product manager can help sales team remove, uh, remove roadblocks. If it doesn't work, the second level uh, where you want to move actually this discussion is the, the roadmap level. So instead of having customers asking uh, for features and saying no, it's the role of the product to give enough visibility on the roadmap uh, to build a roadmap that's transparent enough and clear enough for salespeople to be able to give the same visibility to customer and being able to answer, we might not have this feature in the product right now, but here is uh, our list of priorities. Here is when your problem, when your need is going to be tackled. It may be in one quarter, two quarters, whatever, but at least you don't make a promise that you will not hold, but you give visibility and transparency to the customer. Uh, and, and ultimately that can convince the customer to follow you, although the feature um, he's requesting is not there yet. And the last level where um, you want to bring the discussion to is, uh, is the vision level. And here again, the product vision um, is the responsibility of product teams and product managers to, to build this vision and to make it compelling and attractive for uh, customers, for the market, but also for, uh, for salespeople. So how can you make sure that you're going from a discussion that's about feature quests to a discussion that's about selling a vision of the future and having customers understand that even if something there uh, they need is not there yet, that's where actually the product is going in the long term. And by giving this, this vision, making customers understand that they will be successful in the long term with your product, even if feature A, B, or C is not uh, there yet. So that's really the responsibility of the product to build a compelling vision, a transparent um, and clear roadmap and help sales teams use the roadmap, use the vision to uh, better inform customers about where the product is going and ultimately move the discussion from requests to selling um, a vision. Another way, another good way of um, helping salespeople sell more and sell better is having um, a regular meeting routine between products and sales. And there are especially three meetings that we 
uh, use at Harvestland that we think are really important. The first one is um, what we call here a roadmap meeting. So it's these times when you're actually building uh, the long-term plan. And these meetings should be um, really opportunity to engage sales. Uh, because as we said, if we don't align on the goals and on the direction, this will create friction at, at the end of the process. So it's first getting feedback from sales on uh, customer needs and customer problems. It's engaging sales in the prioritization process and explaining why the product is going in a direction or another, what criteria are being used. Are we focusing on acquisition? So on sales or are we focusing more on retention and giving visibility on this prioritization process will also help align uh, sales teams and, and, and other teams on, on where the product is going and will remove frictions uh, down the road. The second e interesting meeting that you can use is what we call the product pitch. So this happens where you actually start um, a new product project. So you're working on a specific problem that you're going to address. Uh, you already maybe have some, um, some discovery work that's done. You have an idea of, um, of potential solutions. And these meetings, of course, not for any kind of features or any kind of projects, but for large projects, it's really useful to also um, engage sales and other department when you when you kick out those projects because it's a great opportunity to see if you uh, as a product manager identified all the needs of the customer and all the problems that need to be solved um, it's a way to get feedback from sales and potentially identify uh, missing opportunities that had not been identified yet it's also a way to align sales people on what is being built in the next print or in the next um, roadmap cycle and to, uh, to engage them around what's being built. Because if they have a say, if they can get feedback on what will be built, they uh, will be more engaged than in uh, selling the, the, the features that will actually be delivered, delivered in the end. And the last meeting that's also super important is um, what we call demo days. So it's when basically you are releasing features. It's um, a good way to get, again, feedback from, uh, from sales and, and know if what has been built actually meets the needs um, of the customers. Uh, it's a way also to train salespeople on the uh, usage of the features and the products that are released which is very important because they will then have to sell these products to customers. And um, there is also uh, something that's critical is helping um, salespeople communicate the value of what has been built to the customers. So it's also the role of the product to um, have this product management collateral when something is product marketing collateral when something is released, where we explain the value of what's being built because this is then uh, um, uh, content that salespeople will use themselves to actually market and sell the product to, to customers. Ideally, if you um, are able to, if you implemented the right process um, in the first hand to gather feedback from sales, and um, if you're able to actually have sales reps linked to items in your, um, in your roadmap or in your backlog, you can also personalize these demos to make sure that you're doing demos uh, with the right sales rep according to feedback that they give you in the past. So if they're interested in a specific feature that's gonna be released because a customer asked for it, um, uh, keep this information and make sure that you're personalizing these demos to make sure that you give the right demo to the, to the right sales rep to then help them sell the feature that um, they were interested in. Something very important about feedback and that's really tied to what uh, I just said is, is avoiding um, the what we call the feedback hole, the feedback black hole. So it's when basically sales rep um, take time to escalate feedback and requests to the product team and that they never hear back. Um, why it's important to avoid this black hole is because first, if you 
do not make sure to follow up with sales on the feedback they give you, you're going to get back to the old process where uh, sales reps would understand that they need to go to see you. They need to push again and again uh, product teams to get their priorities on the roadmap. And second, uh, it's important that to understand that closing the feedback loop actually helps salespeople um, close more commercial opportunities. So when you have a sales requesting for someone because a prospect um, asked for it, it's very important to give visibility to sales on where this item is on the roadmap and when it's actually being built and ultimately shipped, uh, reach out, reach back to, to salespeople that can then reach back to the customer to inform that the, the feature has been built and potentially generate sales opportunities. So the way we do that, um, again, it's we, we try to keep everything, all this product information that's interesting for sales in their CRM. Uh, so again, what you see is Salesforce here, and we try to give um, sales reps the, the information about the roadmap for a specific customer to make sure that they do not have to make efforts to go to see the product manager or um, get information and, and not finding it. Here, we try to give inf the information that the sales reps need right inside of their CRM by giving and sharing the roadmap of one specific customer uh, directly inside of the, of the CRM. And in general, um, to make sure that this collaboration is as smooth as possible, it's important to understand that salespeople are working in their tool and that's where actually they expect to get as much information as possible. So that's another thing you can do to, uh, to improve this, uh, this, this communication flow between product and sales. So now if we take a step back, how can um, sales and product teams make sure that they deliver actually long-term product success that will benefit the whole company? If we go back to this process, the, these two processes that we uh, saw in the beginning, it's critical to have a collaboration that does not only happen at the end. So during the delivery uh, phase for the, the, the product manager or during the closing phase for the sales rep, but have uh, some continuous collaboration that starts with um, at a strategic level. So when the product is building the roadmap and when sales are building their um, their prospecting plan, make sure that the goals are shared, the strategic goals. So are we going to focus on um, acquisition, for example? Do we have revenue targets? What uh, markets are we going to, um, to target to make sure that the uh, product and sales team will be aligned all along the, the rest of, of the process? So when it comes to discovery and prospecting, when you're aligned on um, strategic matters, you'll make sure that during the prospecting phase, sales are actually targeting the right accounts. And these accounts are what we could call product qualified leads. So it means that sales are actually uh, prospecting companies that uh, the product team is also going after in terms of new features that are being built. And when you have this alignment, you make sure that when you arrive at the delivery phase and the closing phase for salespeople, uh, sales reps are actually talking to customers that are product qualified leads, which means that the product team is actually building things for them right now and um, will be more likely to actually deliver the features that this target segment needs in the short term and will be more likely to address the request of the customers that they were not able to address before when those two cycles were not aligned at all. So to deliver this, this long-term success, it's really important um, to focus for product and sales to focus on the same uh, goals, on the same target segments and go after the, sa the same target segments in parallel to make sure that what is being built by products is built for customers that sales are actually going after. And a good way to do that um, is coming back to how decisions are made and making sure that uh, in the prioritiz prioritization process and in building the roadmap, product teams take into account 
um, what we could call sales data. So uh, taking into account, for example, customer segmentation. So if I'm building something, if I'm addressing a problem, what segment, customer segment will be impacted? Is it a segment that the sales team is going after or not? Is taking into account, of course, um, how many prospects or customers are interested by this topic? Is taking into account how much revenue was lost potentially because we did not have this feature uh, when customers were asking for it? And on the other hand, how much opportunity, how much, how much active opportunity um, is actually in the pipeline for salespeople. And by doing this, uh, when building the roadmap, you make sure that the voice of sales is also taken into account, that uh, priorities are aligned, and that in the end, you will maximize the impact of, um, of what the product is, being, uh, is, uh, is building. So to conclude with, and, uh, and then I'll be happy to, to answer uh, your questions. I think it's super important to understand that company success is really uh, an increasing function of product success and sales success. If these teams are not successful, are not both successful, and if they do not collaborate um, correctly, then the company will not be able to, to sell, uh, to build and sell the, the, the right products. And this of course applies to sales and product, but it also applies to the relationship that product has with other departments in the company, like uh, customer success or, or customer support, for example. So thank you and uh, happy to answer any, any questions you might have. Thank you so much, Valentin. Um, very, very good tips. Thank you. I think uh, a lot of product managers are struggling when they have to work with sales. So everyone, if you have any questions, uh, this is a great time to ask them before we close. Um, I wanted to ask you, Valentin, um, at Harvester, can you give us a bit more insight? Uh, how, so you have sales, you have product managers. Uh, I've seen that you're doing these three types of meetings, which sound great. Um, for example, at the roadmap meeting, are all the sales representatives invited or is it just like one person or how, how is it structured? Well, in our case, um, so we are still a startup, so we are able to invite everyone without making these meetings like too, um, too heavy. Uh, but of course, if you are a bigger company, I think you need to make sure that you invite the right, right people um, at this roadmap meeting. So it can be um, only, for example, the, the, the head of sales that would go to really strategic meetings. But then I think in general, it, it's uh, always a great thing to also include other sales reps, even if it's from time to time, to go to these roadmap meetings and maybe represent the sales function, the sales function or represent a specific market to uh, escalate the, 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 the priorities and the needs of the, of the salespeople. And um, do you have uh, any recommendation about how often you should do these types of meetings without being hit too often or are there milestones when you do I, them? I think the, so for the, the roadmap meetings, uh, they happen usually and they should happen usually every, every quarter, I would say. Um, and you can also have a, a big roadmap meeting at the end of the year to plan the, the, the next year ahead. But I think on a quarterly basis, it's, it's enough for these, uh, these roadmap meetings. And then uh, other meetings like uh, the product demos can happen basically at the end of each uh, delivery cycle when new things are being released. But this can be more um, on a kind of voluntary uh, basis because um, it, it's, it's not sometimes useful to show the, everything that's being released to all sales reps. It's more about showing the, the, the right things to the right people when, uh, when they actually need it. That's why it's important to keep track of um, what parts of the product or what, what features, which features um, specific sales reps are interested in to then, then be able to close the loop in them and inform them and train them when these, uh, these features are, are released. Cool, thank you. Thank you, Alexandra, for the question. This was Alexandra's question about how often you do the, you demo the new features. Um, 
And um, you've mentioned one thing during your talk, which I found extremely true. Uh, and I'm wondering if you have any recommendations for it. So you've said that uh, it happens sometimes that uh, the things which are getting built are the things which maybe the person with the loudest voice or the strongest character pushes for. So I, I find that very true in general in product. It's also sales or customer. So I think when when a customer uh, complains very strongly or energetically about something, then people react. I think it's called also the, the squeaky wheel. So the squeaky wheel gets fixed because it makes noise while the other issues might not get fixed. Do you have any kind of tip for product managers to keep their cool when it comes to, because then if you have somebody coming or a customer complaining, of course, the tendency is to, to fix there instead of maybe getting into this process of analyzing. Is, do you have any tips regarding that? Yeah, I think it's uh, the, the best tip is actually to make sure that this doesn't even uh, even happen, and uh, and that's what I, I was trying to explain is that if you have the right process in place, if salespeople are engaged really early in the prioritization process, if they feel that their their voice is being heard, if they know that, if they understand that um, what the priorities are, and and why the product is building something, and and not other things, then there will less um less likely like go to see product people uh in the middle of the cycle to try to change priorities because they uh actually agreed to these priorities um at the beginning of the of the of the process so i think the the best way is really to try to to prevent this from happening because when this happens you usually uh rarely take the right decisions of course i'm not saying that you should never prioritize a request that comes in if it's um, if it becomes strategic for any reason, product teams always need to be uh, uh, flexible and, uh, and agile. But um, on, on the uh, more global level, you want uh, to to avoid this as much as possible by by having the the right prioritization framework and uh, the right collaboration framework in uh, in place. Cool. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you, Valentin. If there are no other questions, uh, Diego says great tips. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending. We're going to share the um, uh, recording. And if uh, anybody has uh, questions, how can they reach out to you, Valentin? Uh, you can actually reach out to me on LinkedIn. So here is my uh, my LinkedIn nickname, and um, and yeah, I'll uh, I'll be happy to uh, to connect and uh, and chat with you. Okay, one last question before we go. Vanessa is asking how much feedback is needed for prioritization, especially if the product is still scaling up and customer base is missing. Yeah. Um, it's a very good question. I think yeah, the, the issues are not the same depending on the stage where you are in, and um, it's gonna be a bit contradictory to what I said. But when you are in very early stage phase, I think each customer, of course, has more importance because uh, there are fewer customers, um, and, and you should identify first the right um, customers among these two customers because um, it's always important to to focus on one specific segment that you're going to address in the beginning um, as much as possible. And once you've identified this, uh, this segment, I don't think you need a lot of volume. It's more about how this customer is important to you. How do you think he's uh, the, the right, uh, to what extent do you think he's the right persona for you? And if it's the right one, um, I mean, one feedback from one customer can be enough to, uh, to influence the roadmap in, uh, in the beginning. But then the more you grow, the more customers you have, the more you want to uh, make sure that you're building for a larger segment and larger market and not just you, early adopters. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for asking the question. Um, 
that's it. Thank you, Valentin. Thank you. I, uh, I'm really happy you joined us today. I'll share the recording. Let's keep in touch. And Valentin, if you want to contact him, he's on LinkedIn, he is mentioned there. Feel free to reach out if you have any challenges regarding the relationship between sales and product. And I wish you all a wonderful Friday and see you at the next PMF Connect. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.